now we are gonna move over to Qatar as we talk about the World Cup and the controversy. So what is going on here? For those who aren't aware, every four years, an organization called FIFA gets together and brings all these different countries and athletes into a single space and they play soccer or football, depending on you know where you're from. And uh, it's this really big event and a lot of people have been watching it. They've been doing it for a really, really long time. Uh, a handful of years ago, about 12 years ago, this organization made a really weird choice by picking one of the smallest countries in the world, um, also picking one that has general average temperatures at such a ridiculous degree that it is not safe to be out in, and so on and so forth. I won't say all of the terrible things, but basically... There has been a lot, a lot of terrible things. And I, I don't just mean like, hey, they're not going to sell beer at the stadium. Sure, I guess that's a bummer. But I think the 8,000 migrant deaths is a lot worse. Um, so definitely I want to I wanna open this up to the panel um, and get everybody else's thoughts. Um, I have a lot of personal problems uh, with the host nation as well as FIFA, this organization itself. Uh, but I am still watching the World Cup. And I am excited to see, you know, the results of it. So definitely this is a conflicted space for me. Um, Leighton, what, uh, what are your thoughts? Are you, are you a big soccer fan? Are you following it? How do you feel about this? I'm not the biggest soccer fan, but it's the World Cup. It's, you know, it's the World Cup. But like, I, what I find interesting is how many people have been criticizing Qatar just just Qatar, but not actually so much criticism, at least in the media of FIFA as a whole. Like, cause I, there's a lot to criticize there. I don't know if you guys have been following their history. There's not a lot of organizations throughout human history that are like have a high moral standard at the same time as they're like up for sale to the highest bidder. Like that, those two, <laughs> they don't usually mesh too well. Yeah. And but looking towards the future, there's more of this coming. I mean, the next one's 2026, and it's going to be hosted by multiple countries. For the first time in FIFA's history, it's more than two countries hosting. Awesome. But then you look four years ahead of that, and it's Saudi Arabia. Woohoo! Another bastion of democratic morality. So, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, this World Cup itself this one right here of course there's plenty to judge but qatar is not uniquely evil amongst the countries of this world including mine yeah good point uh cindy what are your thoughts on this are you watching are you following along do you have a team you're rooting for i mean yeah uh, i have uh, a team yeah we we don't see it here but it's team france obviously um yeah i'm i'm um, an amateur uh soccer player and so uh, i i wrote notes about um about fifa but uh, um i think you you guys are going to cover it so i'm i'm going to to go to a different route i, I want to explain why uh, it is so difficult for people to not watch the the, the 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 World Cup. So, the World Cup is now almost uh, 100 years old. It's the the biggest sporting event, uh, and has been for a long time. It has an amazing history from uh, uh, Maradona's Hand of God, from the uh, Game of Shame between um, uh, um, Germany and and was it? I don't remember, uh, but yeah, this game of shame that changed the the way the match are organized. There was this uh, the the, the Bra Brazil Germany seven one that's oh, also yeah. historical. Yeah. Uh, the French victory in ninety eight. Uh, I mean the, the the history and and the legend behind this this uh, this event is is massive, and so. Because of that, for uh, for a player, for a soccer player, it's it's like 
it's like Mount Everest for for a climber. It's it's the it's the the biggest thing you could achieve as as a soccer player, being part of your national team at the World Cup. It's 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 unthinkable how how many players want to uh, dream about uh, this uh, because it's it's the it's the the, the 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 best thing that that you can do as a as a soccer player. And so, of course, FIFA plays on that. Um, and there's also the fact that financially, um, for the teams who uh, and for the countries, it's very important because during the competition, uh, the, 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 there's um, a, a lot of companies that broadcast the, um, the, the games. Then there's ad revenues. Uh, from TV and internet, uh, uh, and also there's this political um, takeover when 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 you win. I, I remember in '98 when when France won. Uh, the, the 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 president at the time, uh, Chirac, he he made it like it was France, the entire country, and not just. Uh, not just the, the the team, and and that happens in 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 many many other countries. Um, soccer is universal, and because of that, when when the national team wins, it's it's a major event. You see a, a boom in uh, in in birth, uh, and nine months later, you see a boom in consumption. You see, it's it has a huge impact on. Uh, on, on the country, so yeah. that's why, from the, the the players' perspective to the national federation perspective, it's impossible to boycott the, uh, this competition. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and definitely very appreciative. I know that a lot of our viewers, uh, especially if they're in the United States, may not understand the the impact and the 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 power that this event has uh, for millions and millions of people around the world. Um, Teo, what, uh, what are your thoughts on, on FIFA? Uh, good, bad? Uh, and I oh. will start right away. Why? Uh, I'm a Latino. You know that. In here, religion and soccer are equally important. Re uh, soccer, uh, as you call it, football in here, is just another religion and it's awful i mean i hate both i'm sure you realize that i'm the kind of guy who celebrates when his country uh, uh, fails because that means i will be able to sleep at night i won't have a whole city outside celebrating and i don't like soccer i find it boring yes yes i'm a cartoon who cannot enjoy captain subatsa sorry people i'm that type of guy and i find her uh, soccer as religious as uh, as religious, as harmful as religion. Both of them are the opium of the people. And I have talked a lot of times about why both of them are awful, terrible, and they create a lot of problems for people. I'm so sorry, Cindy, but I can only see the negative thing in here. And I want to start talking right away about uh, Seb Blatter, the president of FIFA during the 2014, who accepted those three millions that are uh, covered in blood right now. His hands are covered in blood because, as you said, he decided to accept uh, this bribe from a corrupt country that decided to murder 8,000 workers just in order to have a nice stadium for people because they didn't have any infrastructure for this, for such a huge event. So I can only see negative things in here. I'm sorry, guys. And yeah, sorry, all Latin America. I know you hate me right now. That's all right, Teo. We'll probably ha invite you back in the future. Uh, Leighton, <laughs> any any other thoughts on when, on when the, the World Cup is over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please. <laughs> uh, I would just piggyback off of what Cindy was saying. I mean, I I can appreciate the love for the sport because I mean, you like look at the Olympics like that. I get because I'm an American. I get that. I've never watched anybody shot put in my entire life. But when that event is happening during the Olympics, oh, did we win? Like, I'm, I'm tuned in for that. Yeah. So <laughs> I get that. But I mean, even going off what Teo was saying, like, look at the treatment of these people. 
not even the people that died. Look at the treatment of the people that actually live. Because, I mean, we have to look at, we know the World Cup is usually played in the summer, right? But it had to be moved to November because Qatar's average, what, 125 degree heat in the summer? So they had to move it to protect the players and the fans. Do you think they were protecting the workers in that time? No. And then we look at the living conditions that have been reported from inside, like I guess from inside their camps, I guess you would call them. Like there are 30 people to a room with one bathroom, one kitchen with limited food and water. Those living conditions are horrible, even if you're being paid fairly, which they aren't. $8,000 over a three year period to send home to your family, which is being garnished. The vast majority of that minuscule bit of salary is being garnished by Qatari contractors that since these people are poor and they're coming here for work, they have to pay to come here to work. So, of course, they take loans from I'm just going to call them loan sharks because that's what they are. So these people are essentially slaves. Yeah. Not even essentially. They're slaves. (laughs) They are just outright, outright slaves. And for, for anybody out there who. Um, was paying attention when Teo mentioned about Sepp Blatter, the former president um, of FIFA. Uh, some of you may be out there thinking, oh, well, at least he's not the president anymore. They must have gotten uh, somebody that that is better. Um, so they didn't. Um, so Gianni Infantino, uh, I, I don't know if you watch this show regularly or not. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, I'd like to tell you um, that your handling of this situation has been so fucking paltry in my opinion that you should step down immediately publicly and give back every single dollar you've ever taken from this organization and you should probably give that money to the migrant workers in qatar uh who have not been paid um one of the reasons i say this is because in the middle of a press conference he he proceeded to say this when being criticized, he said, quote, I feel gay. I feel disabled. I feel like a migrant worker because I know what it means to be discriminated against, to be bullied as a foreigner in a foreign country. Let me go ahead and fucking explain this to you, Gianni. You are not being discriminated against. You are being called out for a shit decision and for the fact that under your watch, under your watch, thousands of people have already died. Thousands more are being intimidated and criminalized just for being who they are in that country. And the the repercussions from this will continue for years to come. That's what you're being criticized for. That's not discrimination. You fucked up, man. That being said, though, uh, Cindy, <laughs> maybe maybe a, 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 a lighter take or I, I don't know, maybe you also feel the same about about this president. <laughs> no, the, this guy is is something else entirely. Oh. Um, John Oliver made uh, an episode recently about this this workup, and he said um, that FIFA was the most corrupt uh, organization in the world. Uh, and. I think I know someone here who believes that this title goes to the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Uh, Silver yeah. and gold, right? <laughs> right there. I'm quite sure. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> you read my notes, I see. <laughs> N- no, actually, no. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, several other people besides Seb Blatter uh, got some money from, uh, from uh, Qatar. Uh, including um, David Beckham and even uh, Zidane, which is my favorite player of all time. But yeah, he got two millions uh, to to advertise for Qatar so that they can get this World Cup. So it's not just uh, FIFA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's. <clears throat> I have to say, it's awful how, uh, as uh, as Secular said, it's awful how FIFA has been handling things. Uh, you know that over there, uh, being LGBT or women uh, is not easy. Uh, there are laws against women that uh, don't let them study, make decisions about work or even their own health care. 
you know, that consensual sex between adults and uh, men is illegal over there. Imagine going to jail because you decided to have sex. It's awful. And people from um, from certain uh, soccer teams, they were going to uh, wear some bands in support of those people. Okay. And FIFA decided to threaten them. Damn. Yes, FIFA is threatening players if they dare to show support to victims of these corrupt governments. How the heck, how the hell can people keep supporting either FIFA or they offer religions? Uh, people, you disappoint me and it hurts yeah. me. Yeah, I um, definitely it, it is it, it, w one of the best comments I ever heard on this. And I, I don't even remember who said it. I think it was just some random TikTok video that I was just passing by. And the individual related this to a house with abused children in it. And what he said was, he said, you as the guest may come over to my house and you may see this party and, and, and the guests, their kids, Hey, their kids can eat candy if they want and they can jump on the table and they can turn the music up louder and they, and, and you're thinking, wow, everything is just fine. But those children at that house that are being abused, you better believe they're down in the basement and they're staying quiet because they know what the consequences will be in that situation if they act out of line. And and what this what this commentator said was knowing that how are you going to behave in my house when you come for the World Cup? And I and I truly truly think that that was just absolutely perfect, a perfect encapsulation of this because yeah, when, when we're seeing the, the images that are being displayed worldwide that FIFA is, is just so excited to show, all they're showing is the people real happy and buddying up with each other, loving each other, and oh my gosh, this is so great, this is awesome. They're not talking about, though, the fact that already there have been multiple reports coming out of individuals attempting to go sit in their seat with something as simple as a rainbow on their freaking lapel and they are being intimidated and told that they are not allowed to be there if they don't take that off um so again as somebody who is excited for the event as somebody who loves the idea of the world being able to get together and all of us rallying around each other and stuff. I mean, I, I love all of that, but I don't think we should be quiet about these problems. And I don't think that just once the World Cup ends, I don't think we should stop our criticism, you know, um, because as as blatant said, as, as others have said, you know, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is, is where we'll be in four years. That's where we'll be. And and what are we going to do? We're just going to start criticizing, you know, this this country again and this government. Hey, look, they've got problems. I, I don't disagree. But what we're what we're upset about is the fact that the organization as a whole, a nonprofit organization, mind you, a nonprofit organization that has literally no competition, a nonprofit organization with no fucking competition in the world with a billion dollars in a bank account. You're telling me that they don't have the ability to choose a better place? You're telling me that they don't have the ability to enforce regulations for workers that keeps them safe? That's bullshit, in my opinion. That's just bullshit. Um, and so truly, I mean, I, I, I'm glad that we have seen some criticism, at least. Um, Blayton, do you think... Do you think anything's going to change? Do, do you think that we're going to see any type of you know, movement from this organization as a whole, or four years goes by and we're going to be back in the same boat. The sad thing is, um, I, you know, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. The sad thing is, I don't see it changing because where everybody's up in arms right now. How many times have we done this? Like any tragedy that happens in the world, everybody's up in arms for a minute, and then it's on to the next thing. Everybody's back to scrolling after that. So, of course, they're going to wait for this to die down. They're going to go back to business as usual. So unless we continue this push, then no, I don't see any change happening at all. Because they're not going to do it for themselves right. because it's the right thing to do. It's not going to happen. Yeah. 
yeah, I kind of unfortunately am in that in that boat too. I don't think it's a pessimistic view. I honestly just think it's a realist view. They make hand over fist money, and they're not they're not going to give that up. I think. Um, Teo, any any other thoughts on this before we move on? Yeah, I really like your example of uh, those children being abused because uh, in your example, people could bring their own children and those children could behave in any way they wanted to. In Qatar, actually, they are treating them just as the other children who are being abused. If they see you kissing another man, you're going to go to jail. If uh, if you're a woman and you dare to expose the skin from your body, you, are, you bet that you're going to go to jail. So every single person who is going to Qatar right now and who is living under this dicta dictatorship where you cannot even drink alcohol, remember, that is the type of country that Christians won in the USA and they are trying and fighting so far to achieve, as we saw in, the first, uh, uh, in our first topic about, the, about what Texas is doing. That is your uh, future uh, um, uh, Christians from the USA if you allow fundamentals and extremist Christians to keep doing what they are doing in the USA. So pay attention, people, and everybody pay attention. Those are the reasons why we, why activists are, is fighting the war? Yeah, it's, we are fighting so far against those problems, and we want to bring attention to them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cindy, any, anything else on, on FIFA World Cup? I mean, France has been doing okay so far, you know? They could win back-to-back, -back. like that's... yeah. I will just say Russia, Qatar, then three countries which will be uh, an ecological disaster because the, the number of planes people will have to take to go see point. the games very good uh, will, will be just terrible. And then yeah. Saudi Arabia. So yeah. what's next? Yeah. Syria, North Korea, uh, what else? Yeah, yeah, very good point. Very good point indeed. Um, yeah, and before before we move on, I, you know, I told you all at the at the beginning, our our wonderful viewers and listeners, that you know a lot of these topics are pretty heavy. I think this is a very important topic. Um, it it is it is a little upsetting for sure. Um, I will I will also say that. Again, I I think we we as those that participate and get excited about this event and, and Blayton talked about the Olympics and the IOC has their damn problems too. Trust me, they're not a great organization either. I think I think we have an opportunity to again voice these criticisms, voice them loudly, voice them strongly, and show that we want change. And I, I think we can make that happen. I don't think it's gonna be easy. Um, but I, I, I do think we can. And I want to leave us on a little bit of a high note, which is just to say that I know technically by the time that this airs, we're still in the midst of this World Cup. But I am already looking to 2023 because the four time world champions, the U.S. women's national team is about to bring home a fifth trophy i am putting it on the line i am excited that is my team i love love those athletes they're some of the best in the world so yeah truly uh really really excited our uh our women's national team is is it's just amazing they're amazing i love them so uh anyway if any one of the u.s women's national team is out there and wants to contact me uh aca email 